Hello? You're about to watch an episode of a sailing trip I was recently a part of. We sailed from San Diego, California to the San Francisco Bay Area and uh, it took us 10 days and um, I made a complete film with the entire passage and then I've broken it up into these small episodes as well. And um, at the end of this episode, there'll be commentary about the episode where I'm reading from the journals and just talking about stuff we saw and stuff that happened on the trip. So check it out uh, and um, check out the links and subscribe if you like it. Thanks. So for the first leg of the trip from San Diego to Marina del Rey, we left at like 3 p.m. Uh, after attempting to get our compasses calibrated, which was a really cool process, uh, really incredible to watch, but they were unable to calibrate our compasses for whatever reason. And I'll actually insert that footage right here. They set the compass calibration shadow gauge near the bow of the ship and one guy watched the shadow as it crossed the marks and would would call out half, quarter, 
and then he would say ah. mark when it reached north, south, east, or west. And then Three. the the other guy in the back was taking record of what the compasses actually said versus what the shadow uh, at two o'clock, which was which was our noon sighting for that day. And um, the guy at the front working the shadow gauge would adjust the shadow gauge per the declination settings every two minutes. So every two minutes he had a little watch, he would adjust it and turn it to adjust for the declination. And I, I was amazed that the declination changes that rapidly. Um, so that was a really neat process to see, uh, even though it didn't yield the results we, we wanted, but it was really cool to see um, the process of that. So anyway, after that, we headed out. We got, you know, we're sailing out of San Diego Bay and uh, past a massive warship, which was pretty incredible to see that close. And uh, then we headed due west, trying to make it around this massive kelp forest. It was just immense and never ending. And even, I, I can't recall how far we went out, but at some point we just had to go through the thinnest part we could find because it seemed to never never cease so we chugged through it and then about that time uh, I started getting seasick and um, I've had small bouts of it when I'm just bobbing at sea but um, nothing like this and uh, September of, of 2014 I spent 21 days sailing on a boat uh, in the Orkney Isles in Northern Scotland, and I never got seasick, nothing. It was fine the whole time. So Neptune decided to ring me out on this trip, and um, I spent the next 24 hours sitting on the edge of the uh, stern of the ship, um, and from 11, or I'm sorry, from 4 p.m. until midnight, I threw up every half an hour threw up more than once every half an hour, but like clockwork. And then from midnight until 6 a.m. every hour, it's like as soon as I would start feel, feeling sick, I would check my phone and it was like top of the hour. And so Neptune was demanding uh, his sacrifice <laughs> over and over for a full 24 hours I wanted to die. Um, so uh, yeah, that was a good time, but I'm glad uh, you know, I made it out the other side. And the whole time, Tim, the uh, the owner of the ship, um, he kept saying, you know, last time we did this trip, it was my turn. I was sick for 24 hours. He kept saying like, I promise you tomorrow morning, you're gonna feel like a new man. And the whole time I was just thinking, you know, that I was gonna get all of my tattoos. I had to do with the sea removed. I was gonna sell my sailing books. I was gonna have to, to, to find a new obsession. Uh, the things that go through your head when you're you know, feel like you're near death, uh, it's pretty funny. So, but uh, after about 6 a.m., the seas calmed down, we were passing near Catalina, and um, the, I only threw up, I don't know, maybe be, maybe six times or something between then and like 6 p.m., or uh, like four or 5 p.m. when we arrived in Marino Ray. So it's 24 hours of just like brutal, brutal seasickness. And, um, and then I was fine the rest of the trip, nothing, no problems. Um, and then even, that is, that's one of the reasons there's very little footage on the first leg of the trip. I was too sick to like look at my phone. I was too sick to turn my head. I was, no, it was just too much. So um, yeah, there's a minimal amount of footage on the first, first leg of the trip. Um, but I, I do re remember in the middle of the night, you know, leaning over the boat sick and uh, enjoying the, um, beautiful how the water glows blue from the plankton and the sea life and uh, just incredible pure magic you know uh, as I'm trying to die overboard uh, you know this beauty of this just uh, incredible bioluminescence of the sea and um, and there are a number of times where I had to really restrain myself not to throw up on a dolphin it happened more than once Dolphins are swimming right next to us. They are very beautiful. They were so close. And I would have to do everything and all my strength in my body not to throw up on a dolphin because I didn't want to ever have that memory for the rest of my life. So I successfully did not vomit on any dolphins on this trip. Um, so let me think what else. 
Yeah, I mean, that kind of just uh, occupied my every being. Uh, sitting on the deck, I couldn't even sit in the seat. I had to sit up on the near the rail. So, um, but we got to Marina del Rey. I went and ate some salad. I slept for like 12 hours and I was, I was doing great the next day and never had any more problems. So, um, let me think. Yeah, I guess that, that's the extent of the first leg, 24 hours. And, um, you know, check out the next leg when uh, I get that up. Uh, it's far more interesting with way more dolphins. Thanks.